So we have science. And then we have art. Are there really two different approaches on either end of an impassable spectrum? No. Aaron Walsh from the Australian National University is a scientist and a scientific illustrator. I, I've always, for as long as I can remember, just drawn during school, drawn at home, and I enjoy experimenting with all different kinds of styles. When I came to university, everybody said, you're going to have to stop drawing because you're at uni now, and I didn't, and things went quite well. And then I found out about the idea of scientific illustration and I thought this is perfect because I'm learning science and I love illustration. So it was great to be able to bring the two together. This is Langley. Langley's an Eastern bearded dragon and he's the inspiration for Aaron's latest illustration. Langley is the most wonderful lizard you could ever hope to meet. When he first arrived he was the size of my thumb and his head was round and he was kind of ugly and over the years he blossomed. Uh, for scientific illustration I primarily use just a common or garden pacer, so a mechanical pencil, very normal eraser and a .4 fine liner. I love the .4 fine liner. Once you've made sure that the general proportions are good is when you start to think about adding detail. Uh, I used to always start on pen and paper because that's what I learnt to draw on and that was what I was most comfortable with but over the last couple of years I have moved to starting digitally just because it gives you a lot more freedom for correcting mistakes and errors. You lose the excuse of well that foot is perfect and even though it's in slightly the wrong position I don't want to have to redraw the whole thing. With this particular work I wanted to focus on the different shapes of scales at different points on the head and in particular the way that the scales between the eye and the ear are very different from the scales around the nose. There's a massive difference between a scientist, an illustrator and a science illustrator. You really need skills in both of those areas. In the past couple of years I have done a lot of fish. Uh, I haven't done that much in terms of plants, although I'd love to do some more. It tends to be more animal biology. If you start out hoping to produce a scientific illustration and it turns out artistically beautiful, great but you're going for the science, you're not going for the art. The knowledge in how to interpret the scientific information and focus in on what's important is the single most important thing when it comes to scientific illustration. I think that a lot of it is learning on the job, uh, so it really helps to have a background in illustration and graphic design, but I think a lot of it is just you give it a go and you keep going until the client is happy. Now they're starting to become more and more of a demand for illustrations again because people are starting to realise that it is the scientific knowledge of the illustrator in conveying the most important piece of information succinctly and clearly that is important. Is, yep. is this what you were going for? Maximum yellow? <laughs> it just happened. <laughs>